everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Well, I want to start talking to you today about episodic soloing. This is an idea that is going to get you sounding better today. It honestly is. Nothing you need to practice for nine months or something. Today, this is going to be better. Before we jump into it, I want to, of course, thank you for watching on Facebook and YouTube and wherever you watch the Digging Deeper Jazz videos. But I want to thank everybody listening on podcast. Digging Deeper Jazz is now one of the few really good jazz podcasts out there on playing this music. So thank you to those of you listening. Uh, please subscribe if you're not aware that uh, we're a podcast. Here we go. So uh, please share this with people you know, and let's get the podcast ratings up there as well. Okay episodic soloing. So the idea of just playing moment by moment. Now, this came up inside Jazzwire this week, is that we had been talking about motivic playing, and we had been talking about voice leading, and we'd been talking about guide tones, and we'd been talking about listening to yourself, and we'd been talking about aiming for the resolutions, and oh my God, like who could possibly keep all that in your mind? And these people were grinding to a halt, and I totally understand why. This video is number 183. For those of you super fans out there who have watched all 183 episodes, do you have 182 things you're doing? No, nobody could do this stuff, including me, all at the same time, thinking about all this stuff ahead of time. Now, that's one of the downsides of this video presentation is I'm giving you things as they occur to me. They're not in a particular order. This isn't the 183rd best thing I know. This may be one of the best things I know today. So the idea is, and that's the power of Jazzwire. By the way, sign up for a, a tour of Jazzwire. I want to get working with you there and we're, get some really powerful stuff going on. It's jazzwire slash schedulista.com. I think that's the, uh, that's the address you want to get to for a free tour. So what was coming up inside Jazzwire? These people sort of grinding to a halt by having so much to think about. Now, here's the thing. As I'm speaking to you, am I thinking about the point I'm trying to make and the end of this sentence and how I'm going to connect this sentence to the next sentence and what my following paragraph is good? No, no possible way. I have no idea how this sentence is going to end, let alone what the next sentence is. There you go. I surprised myself both those times. So why would you know where your line is going to end, let alone what the next? No, that's not it. So how about this? How about if we could play measure by measure? Just say a good sentence and say another good sentence and say another good sentence. I'm going to give you six great licks today, and I'm going to prove to you this works. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what it is. Episodic. Just play a little episode. Now play another one. Does that mean now that we shouldn't use voice leading? Of course not. Does that mean that we shouldn't plan resolutions? Does that mean that we shouldn't use repetition and motivic development? Of course not. But we can't put the cart in front of the horse. We have to know some good vocabulary and be able to say it convincingly. When you can say three or four sentences in a given language, now maybe you can think about connecting the sentences. Just get good at saying three or four sentences. All right, so let's dig into this. I want to give you six incredible licks, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with them. So lick number one comes from Thelonious Monk and a zillion before him. Here's item number one on the sheet. I bet that sounds familiar. The beginning of Blue Monk, but it's also in every jazz solo ever played. Okay, let's look at item number two. And this is something I saw recently from a Tom Harrell solo on the song Joy Spring. So a really nice uh, major chord, a, sort of a one chord lick. Jazz, eighth notes, arpeggios, everything like that. Lick number three. I decided to put a classic quote in here. So cry me a river. You've heard this a million times. So as you can see, we have some different chord qualities, right? We have some major licks here. We're going to have some 2-5 licks, some, some different scenarios, because of course we can't always be talking about the same thing all the time, right? And I'm actually going to put all this stuff together in the Clifford Brown song, Joy Spring, for you in just a minute. So let's go on to the next lick. This is a Coltrane lick that he plays in uh, the song Moments Notice.
fantastic 2-5 lick with an augmented sound in it. All right, let's do one more, one measure 2-5 lick. This one is, I don't even know where this is from. I think everybody's played it at some point. It's this great arpeggiated bebop sound with a flat nine in it. You've heard it before. All right, and the sixth lick. Man, you guys like got a home run here. Six licks in one video. Good God. All right, so the last lick here is, um, is a Chick Corea bit. It's actually a portion from his melody of the song, Got a Match. Six fantastic little bits. It's as if you opened a phrase book. You're going to Japan or to Germany or to some place where you don't speak the language and you've got a bunch of little phrases. Where's the bus station? Uh, where's the restaurant? Things like that, right? And you've got some phrases. That gets you by. That's not bad. Don't worry about writing the next great Japanese novel. Uh, learn four sentences first. So I've given you six sentences. Now here's the point. We can string this stuff together with no other thought and it's gonna sound pretty good. That's what we're gonna do in just a second. Um, before we do that, I wanna remind you guys about Maryland Winter Jazz. Workshop coming up in, uh, in about a month from now, if you're watching this in real time, January 8th through 10th. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's open to people around the world. We have people attending from Australia and from Europe and all over North America. Um, it's gonna be an amazing time. And I know you're thinking, how do we do jazz online? We did um, eight days last summer online with an incredible faculty. It was so powerful. People could not believe how much they learned, how inspired they were, how fun it was. So yes, this winter is gonna be not a great one uh, for obvious reasons, right? What we have going on in the world. So having something to look forward to treating yourself to something, something for the next month to look, you know, to look forward to and to practice towards and then to be inspired after it. It's timed pretty well. Work with Chris Potter and with Terrell Stafford and with uh, Mike Stern and with Paul Bolenbach and Greg Fishman is going to be joining us doing the saxophone master classes. Uh, open to all instruments. So I really hope you join us. We've got, I think, 12 spots left. So uh, please grab one of those. Okay, so now here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you can see the item on the sheet, and by the way, I'd love to send you this PDF. Just email us at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. Send it right off to you. What I did is took the chord changes to Joy Spring, and I put these licks in randomly, honestly. I thought of the licks randomly. They were just things that came to mind, things I've played, things I've looked at recently. I didn't put a lot of thought into the six licks I was gonna give you. I just knew I wanted some major ones and some two five ones, nothing more. So then I dropped them randomly into the chord changes for Joy Spring. So let me play it for you and then we'll talk about what we hear. All right, so what do you think? Did that sound like some awful Frankenstein together thing that was disjunct and immature and whatever? Not to me, not to me. To me, that could have been any, that could have been a solo by almost anybody. Uh, so, so much good vernacular and vocabulary and everything's kind of hung together nicely. But let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. So, between measures one and two, voice leading? No, there's this colossal leap between the two. There's no connection, motivic or voice leading. Cool. Between the second and the third measure, voice leading? Not really. I mean, if we could maybe imagine that there's something there, but it's certainly not by design. Those two licks have nothing to do with each other. Third measure to the fourth measure, is there voice leading? Is there something motivic about them? Not really, but the, but the lick in the third measure does seem to come down into the fourth measure. That was luck, of course, right? That was pure luck. Fine, how about the fourth measure 
into the fifth measure. Well, it is kind of nice that we ended on that E flat concert in the fourth measure and began on an E. Again, there was no forethought about that. How about between the fifth and the sixth measure? No, it's this huge jump going on there, right? How about between the sixth and the seventh measure? Again, a really big jump. So there's, there's really no voice leading. There's nothing that we could call motivic development aside from there's lots of chord tones and arpeggios just because that's what good jazz language sounds like. So you see my point. This was entirely episodic is the way I think about it. Let me play it for you one more time. So, I solo like that some, and so do all your heroes. If they are honest, that's what's going on. And so, yes, there are moments that we get beyond our vocabulary and we're truly creating. That's very true. But, you know, if your heroes are going to be honest, they use this approach. They're plugging things in that they know that they love. And yes, running in the back subconsciously, we are making great connections because that's what human beings do. You don't have to be special or talented or have a blue note recording contract to be making those good connections. You do it all day with language. As you're walking down the street, your body does that physically. Your brain is sorting things out for you to make smooth transitions all day long. Yes, your brain is going to do that here too, but you have to let your brain relax and give it good basic information to work with. So the argument is start with some really great sentences, some really great bits of vocabulary. And when you have those in place, allow yourself to not worry about voice leading and guide tones and the motivic stuff. That actually kind of comes naturally. So coaching on this stuff, you know, this may not have ever occurred to you, right? This is exactly the kind of stuff we get into at jazzwire.net all the time. It's a subscription website. You've heard me talk about it if you've heard... Um, these videos in the podcast, hundreds of people from around the world doing this work together. It's affordable, it's super powerful, and it's a community. That's the biggest thing. It's not just, you, you know, you and I talking, doing private lessons. It's way beyond that. So I hope I'll see you at Jazzwire. I hope I'll see you at Maryland Winter Jazz. And give this a try. Honestly, if you, if you put some of this together today, if you've got some of these little licks you can string together, I think you're going to be shocked when you allow yourself to play this way, how good it sounds. Please leave some comments, uh, Facebook, YouTube. I want to know if this works for you. I think it will. Have a great time with it.